Welcome to another edition of Eye on the Issues, what's happening across Wyoming. We're going to talk about the schooling system, education in the state of Wyoming, specifically charter schools. And uh, right now we're going to talk to uh, a headmaster, BJ Buchanan, uh, at the what's called the Cheyenne Classical Academy. And we're going to talk to a dad, Nick Kemp. And Nick, let's let's begin with you in respect to tell us who you are, where you're from, and a little bit about your, your family and your kids. Thank you, Mike. Well, I'm a resident of Cheyenne now, almost three years. And as we spoke earlier, just passionate about creating more educational opportunities in any community I'm a part of. You know, we find that in our free market economy, the more competition, the more options we provide parents and students to excel in tailoring education to the student. Uh, really, that's what I'm passionate about. I'm a father of three. I've seen the benefit of being involved in the classical charter school community elsewhere. And, and really, we see a lack of educational opportunities in Wyoming. And so we're here really just to enhance what Wyoming already has going. And that's to provide more opportunities for students to excel. Nice. Okay, BJ, a little bit about your background. Certainly. I'm a um public school administration for the last, uh, I'll say 20 plus years. And in those 20 plus years, I've uh, been able to found uh, two schools as a headmaster um, down here in, in Colorado. And um, my wife and I and family are moving up to Wyoming. And uh, we saw the opportunity and we saw what uh, this uh, group of board members was doing. Uh, they were you know, look, looking at a charter school and they were also working with an organization called Hillsdale College. And I have familiarity with Hillsdale College for the last number of years. And um, having been uh, everything from a classroom teacher, elementary teacher, to a school administrator, to a superintendent in a, a rural school district, started a couple of schools myself. Like I, I found it, I want to tell you. And uh, my sons um, have all attended charter schools. And I, I saw this as a great opportunity, and I was very excited for the people of Wyoming about choice and education. Nice. So, BJ, let's begin by talking about education from a big picture standpoint. Compare what a regular public school system is like compared to a charter. How does a charter school fit into the mix? Well, a, a charter school is a public school. Make no doubt about right. it. It's tuition free. All right. It's a choice. It's an option. And but but you have the biggest choice is with your program you're going to have. In Colorado, there's a number of different programs. This happens to be in Cheyenne, Cheyenne Classical Academy, along with Wyoming Classical Academy in Casper, which is being supported by the Barney School Initiative out of Hillsdale College in Hillsdale, Michigan. And charter schools have their own specific focus. What really attracted me to this, and I've, I've worked in a, I have a passion for education, but the biggest part of it is the classical education. Uh, from my own personal experiences, I was working on a degree through the University of Denver, and um, I, I had been in the system working in, and all of a sudden, I, I seen some of the education processes, and I had to have my own choice. I had my, call it my, my solo Tarsus moment, where I was very excited about, I, I said, wait a minute, if this is the way it's going to be in general public, I think I've got to go to charter school. And I went and started a charter school selfishly for my own son. And uh, that's the founding principle in me. And I, I met a group of parents. And so we, I was very excited about putting all of that together. And how did you get connected to the starting of this charter school there in Wyoming? Well, um, I saw an advertisement. Uh, I happened to be on the Hillsdale website. And we saw the, uh, and then somebody directed us to that. Of course, there was a conversation and um, I, I looked at my wife as currently under contract, and I just said, you know what, I'm, I'm very compelled. I'm, I'm seeing what the legislation is. I did some review. Um, I did as much SNU provision as I could. And at the same time, I found out that I, I interviewed with a group of uh, the board up there, and I thought, wow, if there's a chance to get involved with this organization, I want to be a part of it. Exciting. Exciting. Now, um, I'm going to ask you a question. I, I'm not sure if you are familiar or not, since you live in Colorado right now, but you're moving to Wyoming. But Podare yes, Academy um, is another charter school, I believe, in uh, in the Cheyenne area. Can you compare what would be uh, the difference between the classical versus what they do? Well, you said Podare, correct? Yes. 
Yeah, so so I, I believe Pudera is a school of innovation. I'm not familiar with their programming at all exactly. Um, I, what I can speak to is what we have. I always like to say there's two ways to get the biggest building in town. Either tear somebody else's down or build yours up. And we're here about building ours up. And uh, with the classical education approach, it is something that's been around. It's not. It's an old idea that's finally being revisited a lot around the United States. Um, progressive education for the last, I'll say, 80 to almost um, 100 years has come into existence, and it's quickly, if not um, dangerously, replaced the classical education model. And many people are waking up to it across the states, Wyoming, Colorado, the nation in general. And I had that awakening moment as well. So the difference between us is our programs, where the, the, con the content, the richness of the content that we deliver and, and the study and the, the historical aspect of what we do in the math and the sciences, it's a classical education through liberal arts. So classical in the terms of more of a traditional type school, is that what you're saying? Yeah, really? yeah, yeah. we're going to say it's more of a traditional. You really look for decorum. You look for the virtues. Uh, there's a huge dialogue. There's a huge discussion about making sure that you have these foundational pieces in place for our youth. Um, our students aren't exposed to a lot of these things. They need content, not just a standard that's nebulous, but they need specific content. That that will help drive them to thinking, the richness of the dialogue, and the sense of wonder. So tell me about what it takes to start a charter school. I mean, everything from the amount of time. Is, is, it, is, it, is it years, um, <laughs> you know? Or, and, and, and for example, your building is going to be what? Is it, is it previously something else? Obviously, most places don't build right away. Right. And, and uh, well, right now, we're typically rely upon uh, if there's a public or if there's a facility that's available. And, and part of it is there is a facility that's available. The recent legislation in, in Wyoming has changed. And if a district has a, I, I think it's um, Senate File 83 was the name of the, the legislation that came through. And we're very appreciative to... Um, a number of individuals that help put that bill into place. Um, and if there is a if there is a facility available, the charter schools that are applying for it have an option to speak with the district and then have a um, opportunity to to use this facility. If it's deemed available, um, uh, the usage of it is okay by the school facilities commission. There's a number of factors that fall into play on this. So to get that facility, in the Laramie County School District, we're pursuing something called, um, it's called Old Cary Junior High. And uh, it's it's a facility that we're having conversations with right now, um, as our board is also talking with the school district on this. And the Facilities and so, Commission has been involved with this as well. And so this is, since it, it is a public school, this is paid for with tax dollars, I gather. Right. And how do kids choose to, do they have to apply for a charter school? How does that work? Uh, you have to you have to apply through a process. There's an enrollment uh, period. For example, tomorrow at the Kiwanis in Cheyenne, uh, we have another meeting and I'll go through another community presentation, but you have to make a choice. You have to figure out what your why is. What are you looking for? What are you looking to find in a charter school? And it's nice for, for parents to be able to say, you know what, I, I want this choice. I'm going to register. Once you register, you go into a pool. We've already had our lottery uh, adjustment. And so that pool is already, there's so many places that have already been put to um, put in place. For example, you can have 20 to 25 kids per classroom, but do we have enough to get one section? Certainly, but can we have two, two sections of, of grades? And I hope you understand what I'm saying there, Mike, at, at you know two sections of kindergarten, two sections of first, two sections of third. So you want to be able to grow the school in a proportionate manner. And it is a lottery first come. Or, so it's a lottery. Sorry, it's a lottery drawing. And but the first people who got there right away, obviously, there wasn't enough. So they, they, they filled up with the enrollment. Siblings then go right to the top of the list. If if you have a second grader that got got in and now there there's a fourth grade, they would go to that fourth and there's a fourth grader didn't get in, but he would go right to the top of the list because siblings have priority. We want to keep the families together as much as possible. And sometimes that's not possible right away, but eventually it is. 
So compare a traditional public school versus charter. The charter really has more of a focus. Is, is that really the, the, the big biggest difference? Yeah, I, 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 would, I would say the content. Once you start looking at the content and, and the, the richness of it and the delivery of the content, and and yes, the the focus we're able to. Uh, you you want to be able to have as many parents as possible look at this and make this as the right choice. Um, their structure, kids thrive in structure. They love structure. Sometimes uh, um, they they say they say they don't want it, but guess what? We all run to certain things that help us with discipline, and this is self discipline. Um, and, and, and it's a model that you want to continue to put in place for students so there can be more learning. Uh, you know, one of the controversial conversations that's taking place, obviously, in schools across the country right now has to do with the transgender LGBTQ um, issue there. Uh, thoughts on that? Why? What What would I say to it? Um, there's a lot of things that... Um, impact education and does is is that something you know if a student chooses to come there to the school we want that student to be successful it's not an elitist school yet at the same time there's specific guidelines and there's things that you want uh, for all students to be successful now i can understand um if some students who want to be of, of what you just shared with me to come to our school and if they want to learn in a classical education approach, so be it. Understood. Right? They're a Absolutely. student. They're there to learn. Nothing else. Exactly. And uh, can, for example, uh, CCA eliminate or keep the, these types of sexualized agenda, agendas from entering the campus? I mean, you want to keep the focus on education, not on the agenda, correct? Well, there, yeah, there's a lot of things that impact education and the political constructs and the ideologies that impact us are why a lot of moms and dads are moving to charter schools. Unfortunately, um, and fortunately, we want to keep the main thing, the main thing. And what would that be? A classical education of learning. Absolutely. All right, Nick, let's switch over to you for a second. You're, you're the father. Uh, you know, you've got experience with charter schools, it sounds like. Um, have your kids gone to traditional public schools, done homeschooling, or how does this whole equation fit in right now? Yeah, great question. You know, I'm a total public school kid, had a great time growing up in public school. Uh, my wife did a combination of public school and homeschool. And for our children, we've kind of done the public charter school as well as homeschool. And I would say some of the things that really are important to us as a family is just to cultivate a very healthy learning environment. I would say if you're in an unhealthy learning environment, that's really going to detract from, from being enriched and being competent in, in those core subjects that are so important or should be so important for us all. Uh, the other component is reinforcing virtue. You know, we come from a heritage in our nation that really virtue just enhances self-governance. And that's what we're here to uphold is self-governance, ultimately. And uh, I believe it was Benjamin Franklin that said, you know, those who uh, don't adhere to virtue or, or uh, don't have a, a moral code are in more need of masters. And so that was kind of a paraphrase. Those, those aren't his exact words, but really that's what we're trying to uphold is self-governance. And as young people, and for that matter, adults, as they veer away from any kind of virtue in our society, we're going to be more in need of masters. That's all there is to it. So yes, we're here to cultivate a more liberty-oriented society, one that encourages choice, but is is uh, governed by certain virtues that we should all agree upon. You know, nobody's going to argue that honesty and dependability and integrity and kindness are important virtues. And for that matter, the, the uh, rule of law, where do you hear about that anymore? You know, that's important for self-governance. So these are just some of the values that we as Americans should all hold dear. 
it's unfortunate that we're not holding them as dear as we should be. And really, it's our livelihoods. It's our self-governing livelihoods and uh, liberty-oriented culture. So, so yeah, we've seen our children grow leaps and bounds inside the public charter school community, as well as our uh, homeschool community, which is rather robust in the Cheyenne area. It's virtually a private school, if you will, you know, when, when that whole group gets together, it packs out the swimming pools or the ice rinks or the roller rinks. And again, the, the public charter school inside uh, Cheyenne Classical Academy is just going to enhance more options, more uh, liberty loving people that, that truly care about the learning environment for their kids, that truly care about the content that their children are learning and and also the reasons why we study this and ultimately it's to sustain liberty in a large regard now obviously during the pandemic many families around this country <laughs> hundreds of thousands of people really uh, families decided to to homeschool their kids and do some other things and they they realized especially once they realized what was being taught in some of these schools so it sounds like you had an opportunity to do some homeschooling. What was your thought on how that played out versus the organized opportunity at a charter school? Really, I would I would contend that many homeschool families are doing so because there's no better alternative right now. You know, I would be remiss to say that I didn't miss the public charter school community at times. And as we kick Cheyenne Classical Academy off, you know, again, I just, I so look forward to other families benefiting from that, the community. And, um, and again, just provide more opportunities for education in Wyoming as a whole. So what is your advice to parents out there watching this when they're sitting there saying, well, you know, my kid's going to a public school right now. I've been thinking about maybe going over here to a Catholic school, but I've also been kind of toying with the idea of homeschooling. Throw a, a sales pitch, if you will, at them. <laughs> yeah, great question. And again, I haven't experienced all those school communities, but ultimately, you know, I think I think our mission statement really highlights the the values that we're trying to hit home and if Cheyenne Classical Academy's mission statement and vision resonates with you I would say that you should come check us out and get serious about learning more and becoming an educated consumer so Cheyenne Classical Academy's mission is to train the minds and improve the hearts of young people through a classical content rich education in the liberal arts and sciences with instruction in the principles of moral character and civic virtue in an orderly and disciplined environment that emphasizes virtuous living, traditional learning, and civic responsibility. And our vision is to develop the moral and intellectual skills, habits, and virtues upon which independent, responsible, and joyful student lives are built in the foundational belief that such lives are the basis for a free and flourishing republic. And so if that resonates with you, need I say more? <laughs> no, what you said was, was spot on, I think. BJ, back to you for a quick second. So where can people go to find out more about Cheyenne Classical Academy? You can, you can look at our website, uh, www.cheyenneclassical.org. And we have a meeting tomorrow night at the Kiwanis club okay we're going to meet there and all the information's on there i believe we're going to start around six o'clock and um, we've been there this will be our second time there we have a, a couple more meetings coming up in the community I'm, I'm doing a couple presentations at a couple individual homes this is a grassroots um effort um what nick has talked to you about is the moral formation of our students and the kids in our nation across the nation and it's that foundation. You, there's a lot of bad ideas out there. So let's get a vaccination in place through a classical education approach that helps people reason and think. You asked one of those questions earlier and really reason and think to be able to articulate a response 
why is that good or why is that not good? And then let the debate reign from there because it, it's, it's, we're training the minds and improving the hearts, but it's thoughtful. We all have to be ruled by reason. If we're not, we're ruled by our emotions. Very good point. G gentlemen, I think you've really painted a good picture out there for, for parents that are considering other options for their kids. And it really sounds like this is a, a, one of the ones that should be near the top. Um, this is going to be obviously posted online and people will be able to watch this for weeks and months ahead. So hopefully you'll be hearing some from some of the people that have watched this. We really appreciate your time. Um, Nick and BJ, thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you for, thank you for the opportunity.